Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 14 of the simple series of Y6502 assembly programming tutorials. Today, we're going to be looking at the Apple II. We're going to extend the simple bitmap drawing smiley routine we did before, and we're going to add joystick control and move it around the screen. We're going to also have some boundary checks so that it can't go off the screen. The intention of this is that you could use this as the template for a simple little game of your own. And I actually did this in my Z80 series before. I've made a little game called YQuest, which was based on the exact same kind of example from that series. And hopefully I'll be able to do that later on with this series as well. Okay, so let's go over to today's example and see it in action. Here it is. Let's just fire it up here on the Apple II. Now I've got my cursor keys set up to simulate a joystick and you can see I'm able to move around the screen. And if I hold down a direction, I can't go off the screen. So we've got some simple controls for a smiley face here. Let's have a look at the code that's doing this. Okay, so it's based on the previous bitmap example. So if you need to see how that works, please see the simple bitmap example we looked at before. But um, I'm gonna assume you, you know about that part for starters. Now, the first thing we're doing is we're defining some zero page entries, one for the current X and Y position, and one for the last X and Y. And this is for if the player goes off the screen, we need to reset their position and keep them on the screen. Here we've got the start of our code. We're just um, setting up the screen and clearing out some memory here. And the start of the code is just here. And this is loading in the starting position of our player sprite. Then what we're doing is we're loading into ZH a default joystick input value. And we're skipping over the joystick reading routine on the first iteration of the loop. The reason for this is usually we're waiting for a key to be pressed before we do anything. And if we um, don't skip over that wait first time, we'd never see the starting position of the player. Now, when we start drawing, the first thing we do is we back up the current player position into those backup values, and then we run this blank player routine. Let's take a look at that. So blank player and draw player are basically modified versions of the smiley routine that we saw in the previous simple bitmap example here. Now, you can see the smiley face sprite that we used before here, but we've now got this alternate version, which is just a blank area of screen, and this is just to clear away the previous sprite. And this code is basically exactly the same as it was last time, so we're not going to cover it in any detail this time. Just go and look at the simple bitmap example if you need to see that. The new code is just here. Now, this is the joystick reading routine. It's quite long, unfortunately. And the reason for this is that the Apple II joystick is an analog joystick. It returns a value from roughly zero to 100, and we're gonna convert that to a digital value because we work in digital joysticks in these multi-platform tutorials. Now, how do we read in from the analog joystick? Well, unfortunately, it's not as simple as reading in a byte from an address on the Apple II. What we have to do is we have to send a reset pulse to the joystick hardware, and then we have to wait until we get a ready signal back from that and the time between the reset pulse and the ready signal is the position of either the X or the Y axis. So um, we need to increase a counter until we get that result. And then the value of the counter is the analog position of the joystick. Now, the code we've got here actually reads both directions simultaneously. And for that reason, it's a little bit tricky. Now, I actually got this code from an example in a book, so I uh, can't claim any real credit for it. I just made a few tweaks to it, but it will work just fine. And it does get both of the values back from the analog hardware, and they give a value from roughly zero to 100 in hexadecimal. Now, what we're doing then is we're converting, once, once we get here, we've got the Y value for the Y axis and the X value for the X axis. And we're using this conversion routine to produce what's known as a dead zone, which is where the middle area of the analog range is ignored and the low values or the high values are going to be converted and they're going to be converted to a one bit where the joystick is pressed in that direction or a zero bit where it isn't. And that will give us a nice digital return and it will return a single byte where the bit zero is up and then down, left, right, and then a fire bit. So that will give us some directions that we can use nice and easily within our code to move our player. So if you remember here, we're blanking the player. Here we're loading X and Y with the current player positions. And then we're testing each bit in the returned value from our joystick routine, which we will load into ZH here, which is a zero page entry. So then we're just testing each bit and seeing if that's pressed. If it's not pressed, we're skipping over the next section and each section will be moving either the Y or X axis according to the direction button being pressed. Now, if up isn't being pressed, we'll just skip over to here, but if up is being pressed, we're subtracting eight here. 
and if down is being pressed we're adding 8 here. If left or right is being pressed then we're just increasing by 1. The reason for the difference in the movement size is because basically it's going to be very hard for us to move a single pixel across the screen because of the orientation of the screen. So we're just moving in equal um, units in each direction to keep the movement consistent there. And so that's why we're doing that. Now once we get to here we've actually moved the player so we're now updating the um, stored versions of, from the X and Y registers here and then we're checking if the player is gone off the boundaries of the screen. Now the top left corner of the screen is 0, 0. If you go below 0 in 8-bit you will rotate around back to 255. So there's no need to check a negative value, we just need to check the top bounds to see if the player has gone off the screen in this case. If the player has gone off the side of the screen or the top of the screen or the bottom of course or the right hand side, we're jumping to player reset and we're reading back in that backed up copy of the player position and storing it back into the x and y values here. Whatever happens, when we get here we need to draw the player back to the screen again and we're doing that with this draw player routine. And then the last thing we're doing here is just a little loop to delay things to keep things uh, nice and um, even speed for the system. And that's really all there is to it. So taking the previous sprite example, all we've essentially done is made a second version to draw the blank sprite. We've got the new calculation routine to convert analog to digital values from the joystick here. And then we're just moving a position of the sprite around with these checks just here. And as I say, that's really all it took to get this working. So there we go. Now, of course, this example is available for download off my website, as my, all of my examples are, so please go ahead and do that if this looks interesting to you, and have a go and see if you can make this as a template for a little game, you know, like a Pong game, or some kind of gunslinger shooting game where you've got two players shooting each other, whatever you like, really, it's all up to your imagination. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, you know, please like and subscribe and all that kind of thing. I've got lots of other tutorials on the Apple II and loads of other systems, not just 6502, but a wide range of processors. I'm really trying to cover every processor that assembly makes sense on, you know, all of the classic ones and or all of the ones up to the sort of, um, hopefully the, around the N64 era I'm hoping to go up to. So um, if that sounds interesting to you, please like and subscribe. Uh, I've got a Discord and a web forum as well. Um, my website's learnasm.net, so check that out. But whatever you do, I hope you enjoy programming and assembly in general. Thanks for watching today, and goodbye.